Good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's go into it. So, most of the introduction was already done, uh, and I seem to have lost. Oh, there we are. Okay. Uh, so, most basics have been uh, been told already. Um, I'm very passionate about uh, performance and security. Those are the things I uh, work most uh, with at Combell. Um, and of course, debugging uh, issues for clients. Uh, I'm on Twitter and at Brecht Rijkaard, and my website is just as well, brechtrijkaard.com. Um, the slides will be tweeted and will be published on my uh, site later today, so you'll find them there. Who ev has ever had this? Or this one, for that matter. <laughs> or even when migrating a website. And we all know this. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, OK. So for some reason, the uh, connection to the VGA is a bit flaky. We'll try to deal with it. Um, things like that should also be common knowledge. Is there anyone in the room who hasn't had it? <laughs> you, sir, are awesome and a very lucky man. And like, doesn't it make you feel like we all get frustrated now? Before we can dive into the, the process of going through uh, solving the problem, there's a little bit we need to know about error codes. Uh, there's, well, there are many kinds of error codes, but there are two kinds that you'll be confronted with the most, which are 400 based error codes and 500 based error codes. The funny thing is, these already will give you a, a good indication of, on where to focus your search uh, to solve an issue. So basically, in really simple terms, a 400 code will say, you stuffed up. It's a client error. Uh, a 500 code will tell you, your server stuffed up, uh, meaning something went really, really wrong on the server, not, necess not necessarily your, uh, your issue or your cause. So here's a, a number of error codes you might encounter. So you see uh, the 400 ones always have something to do with uh, basically your code or something which is missing in your application or uh, you're, you're doing a, a request that's not entirely correct. You're uh, trying to connect without proper authentication, things that are client side related. Uh, and of course, the, the most common one of all, the, four, the 404 file not found, which is basically your, your website for sending me this. Then there's the 500 ones. Those are the ones you'll probably see most, uh, especially when working with WordPress. Uh, you get internal server error uh, not implemented, uh, bad gateway, things like that. Um, basically, this is your server at that point. Now. The interesting part is how are we going to debug this? Um, there's quite a lot of tools we can use, quite a lot of techniques. Um, these are the, the things I use whenever a, a client would uh, contact me and would uh, tell me, when, okay, I have this issue or uh, I get a white screen or this or that, whatever. Uh, basically, I will dive into the server logs. I will use WP debug. Um, I'm a huge proponent of WP CLI. And then you have, of course, uh, some other statements you can use, like script debug and save queries. And there are also a couple of plugins with our, which are pretty handy to uh, debug issues. So first up, uh, the server logs, uh, which is for anyone who has anything to do with hosting, probably the go-to resource if you're going to debug something. There are a couple of uh, types of errors you'll find in those logs. Um, there are more than these, but these are the most common ones uh, we'll encounter. So you have fatal errors, you have warnings and notices, and you have limit-related errors. Um, uh, okay, so can anybody, everybody uh, read it? Because I'm not quite sure. Uh, well, uh, for example, this one, um, 
It's one we, we see rather often. Uh, who has encountered this one before? One person, OK. So for example, this would be if uh, you were trying to do a request towards a specific file uh, or a folder or whatever. And it would be uh, denied because of, for example, the HT access prohibiting the connection to it. And this will result in this kind of uh, error message that pretty much stating that your, your server or your setup is preventing the request from being completed. There are other ones which are not as, uh, as obvious, like this one. Uh, this technically tells us that your, uh, your request is waiting on some kind of feedback or some kind of callback before it can uh, continue. And it, the response just didn't come in time, and it aborts. So it's, it keeps on polling. This one is a classic. Uh, just by show of hands, who has seen this one? Pretty much everyone in the room, just as I expected. Um, this is mostly code related, so um, in most cases this will indicate a bug or uh, a typo or anything like that. Um, this is something we usually won't always be able to solve as a hoster. Um, this needs to be usually done by the developer uh, of the website. <coughs> Then there's uh, one of my favorite tools ever, WP Debug. Um, it's an amazing tool. Um, so in WP Config, you'll have by default uh, WP, Dof, uh, WP Debug uh, defined as false. Of course, to enable uh, debugging, you just alter it to true and save the WP Config file. This should be common knowledge. Um, and at that point, a debug.log uh, file will be generated in your WP content folder, containing more error output than the regular server logs. Now, of course, it isn't uh, always as, uh, well, yeah, I was one slide early, I'm sorry. Uh, so to enable the log, you need to uh, add this statement. And then the, the log will be, uh, will be shown. So in the first statement here is actually just visually displaying the, one, uh, the errors on, on the screen. This one adds the log file. But of course, you don't want them, uh, the errors to be visually uh, for everybody to see. So this is why we would add this on if you're debugging on production sites. Uh, this will enable the debug function in combination with the other two statements, write the errors to log and won't display them on screen for any visitor to see, which is a lot more safe uh, in a production environment than if you're uh, just making it publicly available. So my ideal setup in this case would be exactly this. Enable debug, enable the log, but don't display it on screen. Then we uh, come to WPCLI. I've, I've been a huge proponent of WPCLI for years now. I've um, been following it rather closely. Um, so it's also great to see that it's now part of the, uh, the core uh, services and tools of WordPress. And uh, well, that uh, Alain Schlieser has been uh, taking up development uh, amongst others. He's a really good developer. So. I expect many great things from uh, WPCLI in the coming months and years. So, uh, What are the things I use? Mostly, the, those are these ones. Um, there's a couple of commands uh, here. So WP plugin lists, it's rather obvious. It gives you, in the command line, a output. For some reason, my, uh, I get interference on my uh, remote. So uh, WP plugin list gives you uh, a list of all active plugins, shows you if, uh, um, well, all installed plugins, shows you if they're active, if an upgrade is available, things like that. Now, it can often occur that um, and the user activates a new plugin in the backend, and the backend becomes unreachable, but the site still continues functioning. In this case, WP uh, plugin deactivate will be a godsend. You just connect to SSH, you do uh, WP plugin deactivates, let's say, uh, WP3 uh, total cache. 
and you will be able to disable the plugin, restoring access for uh, the customer without having to do anything else. So that's a very easy way to, to deal with that kind of issues. And of course, you can also reverse it by just using WP plugin activate. Same thing with the teams, listing teams, deactivating them and activating another one if there's an issue. Um, and then there's two really, really cool addendums uh, which have been made uh, to WP CLI in the last couple of, well, last couple of months to a year. The first one is WP Checksum Core, which is, um, well, uh, at, at Comble, we're often confronted with, um, with customers which site is suddenly throwing an error, but for some reason, it's not necessarily a bug or anything else. So sometimes it's also, a, 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 well, it, it follows a case of hacking. And by running WP Checksum Core, um, WP CLI will, val uh, will verify every single file within the main uh, root uh, installation uh, the WP admin folder and the WP includes folder against the repository, so against WordPress Pandora, and it will output a list of all files that have been altered that shouldn't have been altered, or even all files which aren't supposed to be there. So that's a very easy way to find uh, if it's caused by hacking, for example. And I actually even find it to be more accurate than, for example, uh, a, a Linux tool called Maldetect, uh, which we also use. So it's, it's, it's a very, very uh, accurate tool. And just recently, with version 1.5, which was released, um, they added Checksum plugin, which does the same thing, but against all plugins in the WordPress repository. So this is, this is tremendously awesome if you're debugging anything and if there's even the slightest suspicion of hacking. So great tool to use. Now, another fun, uh, funny thing is if you're, sometimes WPCLI will crash or not give you the, the requested or expected output, but it will result in an error that you wouldn't have found otherwise. So I've, I have some cases where I, for example, do a WP team list, and I found this. Um, it didn't turn out in the, the regular error logs, but through running WP team list, I found this one, and <coughs> yeah, obviously this is hacking. This is favicon underscore something something uh, dot ICO. It's something we see rather rather uh, often these days and usually as well, a shell or a backdoor or something like that. So that's also, uh, it's not an intended use, but it's an extra uh, handy use nonetheless. Then of course, we have uh, script debug, um, which is another thing we can simply add to the WP config file. Uh, what it does is by default, uh, WordPress will be using uh, minified versions of, of J JavaScript libraries and things like that. Uh, if you add, enable script debug as true, just by adding it in the WP config file, it will not use those versions, but the dev versions, the full unminified uh, versions, which can help to resolve issues. <coughs> this is specifically more for a developer profile, but can be handy nonetheless. Then there's a, another one. Uh, I actually, during the research of this talk, I actually learned about this one. I've been giving support on WordPress and, and other sites and, and things like that, but for over for nearly 10 years now, and I didn't even know about save queries, so I'm very ashamed. But I've learned something useful here. So what is save queries? It's another statement we can add to the WP config file, but what it does, it will store all information on the queries you're running in an array, in the WPDB array. Um, so the funny, funny thing is if we then add, it, uh, add, for example, this part of the code uh, or this little segment of code to the, uh, the footer, we can print out all queries just on the page. So this is e very easy uh, if you want to do an analysis of slow queries or just see what the WordPress is doing uh, database-wise. So this can help if, it's, uh, if your site is especially slow, for example, in the back end, this might help you out. Then, of course, there are useful plugins. Um, first one is uh, core control. Uh, don't know if, 
Has anybody heard of it? No? OK. Uh, so this will help you do uh, a few very handy things. Um, it allows you to verify crons you're running uh, on the WordPress. So this is uh, actually a bit to verify uh, yeah, uh, scheduled tasks and things and like that within WordPress. It helps you to take manual control of, uh, of updates. So it, this will help you to force certain updates uh, on your WordPress. Uh, it does HTTP logging, um, extended HTTP logging, I should add. And you'll be able to test certain transport methods, so you'll be able to test specific GET or POST requests against your WordPress site. Uh, can be handy. The most favorite one, however, is this one. The WP Debug Bar, um, which is a very useful plug, uh, plugin, because it basically uh, does everything WP Debug will do and Save Queries will do. So to, if you're installing this plugin, you will be needed to add to set WP Debug to true and enable Save Queries. And then you get a very easy uh, way to get the output of this. Uh, just like if you're the Save Queries, you just go to the Queries part, uh, part and it'll just print it out as, uh, as you see it in here. So you don't have to add the extra code to your, to your footer template or, or something like that. It also allows you to take control of the, the internal object cache of WordPress. So you'll be able to clear it or just do some tests against it, which is a, a tremendously uh, interesting thing. There's also uh, a number of typical errors we're almost on a daily basis confronted with. Um, just by show of hands, who has seen a media library like this? It's a fairly common issue. Uh, usually, not always, but let, let's say in 90% of the cases, uh, to my experience, it would have something to do with uh, the upload path in the WP options table, which is set incorrectly. This mostly would happen after a migration from one server to another, uh, especially if the server isn't using the same kind of configuration or, soft, uh, or paths. So for example, if you're going from a uh, direct admin server to a plus base server or vice versa or anything like that, the paths will be different. So in most cases, it would be resolved by just clearing out the, um, the, the, the value. So in this case, uh, slash etc. I just set it there to break it and to make the screen, screenshot like that. Um, just by cleaning it out, it will, uh, WordPress will automatically detect the current path. So that should resolve the issue. You'll be able to upload again, and all files that are there should be shown again correctly. Another one is this. Uh, for this, I broke my own site. Um, this is also something very common. Um, often happens after migrations as well. Um, in this case, the content is being loaded. However, the CSS is completely ignored or missing or whatever. This usually has to do with incorrect site URLs in the database. So in this case, I replaced prechtrijkaart.com by prechtrijkaart.com.loka, and you see it breaks the entire layout of the site because these two values are what are being used to reference pretty much everything in WordPress. Then there's the instant classic. Cannot modify header information. Header already sent. Uh, just curious, by show of hands, in the last couple of weeks, I think pretty much everyone has seen this one. There's actually a number of uh, probable uh, causes for this one. Um, they could be uh, intentional or unintentional, but most cases would point uh, to a white space before the p opening tag of PHP or <coughs> after the closing tag. Thais uh, just yesterday uh, told me that's exactly the reason why he does no longer use closing tags in PHP at all, just never uses them anymore. Uh, other things could be uh, functions like print and echo, which are already producing an output and thus sending a header, or uh, raw HTML sections prior to PHP code. Uh, those are some causes. There are many more 
possible causes, but these are uh, the causes that we tend to see most as the cause of issues uh, at support. Now, I'm very happy to be talking about something new coming to WordPress, uh, really shortly, if everything's okay. And that's Tide. Uh, has anybody heard about the Tide project within WordPress? <laughs> A couple of people, great. So what is Tide uh, going to be and what will it be or what will it do to uh, impact uh, your experience and reduce bugs? Uh, it's actually uh, a new team within the core teams of WordPress, which are uh, creating and uh, are planning to run automated tests against every single plugin that is going to be uh, submitted to the, the plugin repository and to the backlog of all existing uh, plugins. Now, uh, these tests will be done by, amongst others, uh, PHP Code Sniffer. <coughs> Uh, which will verify if the code upholds certain standards, but also is able to just find out about certain errors in the code. And in that case, uh, the tight uh, team will be implementing a mechanism normally that will report those errors back to the plugin developer. So this will result in more bugs getting fixed before it even gets into the repository, which is a very good thing. And of course, the check of the entire backlog will be an awesome thing. Um, to give you an example of what a PHP code sniffer can uh, do, uh, not many people know this, but uh, recently there has been a, a huge patch uh, for WordPress core, over 100,000 lines of code, which have been altered fully automatically by PHP code sniffer. Um, one of the, the leading people in that project was uh, Julia Treinders Volner. Uh, who is a huge PHP code sniffer proponent uh, herself. Um, and this was just done by using PHP code sniffer, automating the entire process and pushing it to production. And there, has, have, there have been some issues, but on a scale so small that it even wasn't an issue at all. So um, this gives you an idea on how good this PHP code sniffer thing really is. And it's also a tool which you could use, for example, if you're using PHP Storm to develop your, your site. There's an implementation of PHP Code Sniffer already inside of it, so you can use it to test your, uh, your code as well before going live. Now, what can you do as the end user? Um, it's always easy to say, well, it doesn't work, it's crappy, whatever. Um, don't do that. Um, if you're confronted with a bug, um, first and foremost, uh, contact your hoster, work with them, uh, find out what's going on. Uh, and normally, every case, they will be happy to help and point you into the right direction or even implement a solution if possible, if it's something which can be altered by changing the PHP settings, for example, or the, the file uh, permissions or whatever. Uh, but once the, if you find out, for example, a bug in the code, um, Please report it to the developer of the team, of the plug, report it to the core people of WordPress, because only that way we can work together and, well, be aware of the bugs, fix them, and result in a better code base for all people to use, um, <coughs> which will, in the end, result in less bugs, and less errors, and a happier crowd using WordPress altogether. Um, yeah, basically this. A bit shorter than I was expecting, uh, so I've been going rather fast, but um, are there any questions? Uh, yes? You showed earlier uh, that you can test the checksum of WordPress core with mm -hmm. the WPCLI, but how, what are the odds that WPCLI has been compromised and just returns <laughs> no case uh, Well, that would depend on your implementation on the server, because technically WPCLI is a binary which you can install on your server. So if the setup is pretty OK, the binary should be able, you should be able to use it within the hosting account. Yeah. But the binary should be, Outside the, uh, yeah. Hosting. Yeah, so this would prevent uh, WPCLI getting uh, compromised, except, of course, if your server is rooted. Then you still have the option of getting compromised as well. Is there an option to run WPCLI remotely? Because I know it depends on file system and database credentials, I guess. Um, Is it possible that, that with SSH, SSH connection? Yeah. 
in that case. Yeah. But it still release the commands to the WPC CLI installation on the server. Yeah. Yep. Is that it? I'm not sure. Um, sure. I haven't used it remotely, so I would have to look into that. I'm you mean sorry. the file system mount, I guess, because it yeah. scans the files. Yeah, it does. What the, the yeah. database credentials are. Yeah. Is, is there a Slack channel for, w, for WPC like? Uh, there is a Slack channel on migo.wordpress.org. Uh, uh, um, and there's also, uh, since it's been uh, introduced within the WordPress services and tools, it's also uh, on uh, make.wordpress.org slash WPCLI or WP-CLI, I think. Uh, so there's an entire page where you can follow the latest uh, developments, releases, and things like that. And you also have WPCLI.org, uh, which will also point to these pages, but will also have a direct link to the entire list of commands you'll be able to use, because it's, it's an extremely useful tool. I only showed you a, a small portion of the possible commands, but you can, for example, also use this to, to do uh, migrations or change your, uh, your domain or do basically anything you would be doing in the back end, but f over SSH on the command line. So it's an extremely potent tool. Another question. Uh, yeah. Uh, in English, sorry. OK, problem. Um, Maybe you can repeat the question in I will English. in English, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, yeah. So I was talking about Tide that they will do the automated scans once it's been submitted to a repository, um, and he asked if it's also possible to do it before you'll deploy it to the repository. Uh, the answer is yes. You will be able to do that. Uh, but you'll need to install PHP code sniff locally. It's, a, it's an open source tool, so it's free to use. Um, but if you like it, please contribute to the project. Um, or if you use, for example, PHP Storm, you can just install it as a plugin. And you can run it locally, and it will do exactly the same checks uh, as uh, PHP code sniffer will do in the Tide implementation. But do note that Tide will include some more checks, uh, some custom checks developed by the WordPress core teams, uh, or specifically the WordPress tied team. So I don't know which those are yet. Uh, yeah. Um, I have a question about uh, the, the checksum part of the WPCLI. Mm -hmm. um, uh, mostly, uh, a lot of the time when, uh, when a website gets hacked, mm -hmm. and they also add a lot of different files, PHP files, or other files. Mm -hmm. Somewhere deeply nested inside one of your plugins. Or mm -hmm. or, um, does it also check for added files, or does it? Yeah, it does. Check, uh, it does. So I, I just recently, uh, I think two days ago. Hear yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, actually, uh, I think two days ago, I was working on a ticket for a customer, uh, which this person's site had been hacked, and so I uh, ran uh, our uh, maldetect implementation, uh, which scanned and found, I think, three or four files. Um, I tend to know now that WP checksum is a bit more accurate, so I ran that check as well. It found seven additional files, of which were um, three of them were altered legitimate files, so indicated this, these files have been changed. And then it simply states, files should not exist, and it shows you uh, some file name, uh, well, yeah, random string of, of numbers and, and digits, and then mostly you know this isn't quite legitimate. So it also shows you added files, and that's a great thing with the new addition of the WP Checksum uh, plugin, because it will check the plugin folder for added files as well, that's which cool. is a, a really great thing. It'll save you a lot of time. Yeah, people cannot, uh, okay. cannot use WP CI because they don't have SSH connection or something. They can also use uh, WordFence. They could use word fans. Uh, you could use if 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 that's even too high level. You could uh, point your uh, your user to, for example, things like uh, security side check or uh, gravity scan, which are basically also scans just run run remotely. They're not fully as accurate, but they're they're okay. They're okay. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. There there are lots of solutions. Yeah. Yeah, I'm great overview. Thanks for the talk. I mean, I'm using custom logging. Like, I'm um, logging when a user logs in, um, logging when a REST um, API request occurs. So, uh, is that something that you use? And uh, why not 
I, I haven't used it, no, because in my use cases, so I, I usually provide support on the, the sh our shared hosting cluster. Um, with the tools I've shown you here, in combination with our default logs, I'm, I haven't had actually any cases where I wasn't able to solve it. And in the exception of one or two cases in the last two years, where I had to resort to, uh, for example, S-Trace, I was able to resolve every other case um, with just these tools. So I haven't had the need to implement them uh, just yet. So, um, yeah. If you want to have a look at it, um, former colleagues of mine um, built, it, um, built some bridge between Monolog, which is mm -hmm. a PHP based logger, and WordPress. So oh. like, um, it's called Monolog, or W. Um, okay. And it comes with pre-built um, listeners and handles for what WordPress uh, does in the inside. So like, when the user logs in, mm -hmm. you have automatic listener, you have a um, REST API listener or something like that. So um, <coughs> the problem is using monolog in a WordPress context. Yeah. This thing has been done in the monolog package. OK. I think we'll be talking later on. OK. <laughs> I'll be st springing goodbye. Yes? They also have a root which is quite popular. They also have a scan which uh, actually, I use WordFence on every single site I uh, I operate myself. The the free one, the free one, just with the with the uh, some uh, settings tweaked. So, uh, for example, I don't give uh, hackers an hour to test thirty different times. I I just uh, limit the attempts to I think three and ten minutes, and then they're already blocked and. But basically, it's a free version I use. Um, now that I am uh, using WPCLI, however, I do tend to use that more often to perform a, a scan via the checksums uh, than the WordFence. I'm not saying WordFence is bad, not, not by any means. It's a great plugin. Their, their scan is very accurate. It's just, to my opinion, the WP uh, checksum commands are more accurate. So I prefer those. It's also another plugin, and it's, it's exactly, yeah, it's exactly, exactly. And <coughs> non-technical users, WordFence would be perfect. I, I have a question related sure. to that because um, I'm sort of maybe a half technical user, mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and this is the part I hate about okay. making WordPress websites. Um, we've been, you've been talking about hex websites. Mm -hmm. um, is, does this come inside when a web website's already hacked, or do you do preventive scans, and on what basis, or how long does it take you? To we, we do, well, uh, I can, of course, only speak for our own hosting cluster, uh, but we do preventive uh, scans uh, a couple of times a month uh, using the uh, Maldetect package, uh, which is in, it's a custom implementation we run, uh, which scans for uh, file signatures of malicious uh, malicious code and things like that. Um, and it reports us if a certain account has been in, uh, infected. And based on that, we do a manual research as well. And this is where, and this, is where this comes in, yeah. Okay. Because Maldetect is, is good, but it's not great. So this is like digging deeper into yeah. the research manually using these tools? Yeah. Exactly. It's quite a lot, quite a lot of tools. Um, there's, you, a, there's another one that we use. In, oh, another yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, but it's not <laughs> preventively. That well, it's, it's a more, but it depends on what you understand under mm -hmm. preventively. What we do is we have uh, mod security plugins that mm -hmm. do zero day uh, detection. So that means if there is a well known critical vulnerability out there and the sites have not been patched and are prone to it, Mm -hmm. We will stop it at the web server level before it enters. So even if you weren't quick enough on the gun to upgrade your WordPress, mm -hmm. it still won't hit you because it's and it only applies to well-known issues. If you yeah. have these little exotic plugin that has a leak, you won't be protected by no. that. But well-known leaks will be covered before you get patched. Is this the difference between good hosting and crappy hosting? Well, you could say yes, but, <laughs> yeah. but we, uh, it would be uh, it's a bit arrogant to, to say yeah. that only we do it. I think it's a common practice that it's right. yeah. okay. the, so the as established an end user, hosting you, community. Yeah, you can depend on the hoster doing this as well for you. Tech all the hosters do should, yeah, things. they should. So, so of all the tools you've showed us, mm -hmm. what, do you use them every time, all the time, or is there one particular favorite or one you start with? Um, the, the first, uh, actually, I, I basically uh, shown them in chronological order. So um, the plugins, I don't use, or pretty much don't use them at all, because most things I can do from the command line. 
Uh, and well, as I said, like the WP debug bar is actually just an easy way to implement safe queries and WP debug for, uh, well, a bit less technical users. Um, so, but you can do the same thing via the command line. So I always start with the server logs because this will give you the first indication of what is going on. And based on what I can find in the server logs, I will then either resort to, for example, uh, WPCLI or uh, WP debug or things like that. Yeah. It gives you a direction. Yeah, you exactly. And that's also the, the error codes will give you an, an initial uh, direction to, to go and find your, your culprit. Okay. So maybe one more question? Yes. Do you use uh, XDebug or something like this? Uh, well, I don't use it personally because with these tools, I'm able to solve 99.99% .99 of all cases that enter. And usually, if I can't find it, <coughs> we resort to S trace. We're and a bit weary of installing Xdebug on a production system. Yeah, because it's exactly. Quite heavily, but uh, an alternative that we are heavily looking into is uh, the use of application performance monitoring tools like New Relic or mm -hmm. Tideways or Blackfire IO. It's just a matter of finding the right match. And uh, that gives you pretty good breakdowns of what is happening mm -hmm. and also gives you a sort of map of all the services that you're calling, external yep. APIs. Uh, it, it, it's primarily related to performance, but it could yep. be used in a debug context yep. as well. And you have a, you can control your sample rate quite well and it doesn't hit your server anymore. Yep. Okay. Before we give a big applause to Brecht, uh, I have a very important announcement that you won't hear when you start leaving. People with dietary requirements, because lunch is